Hello everyone and welcome back to the good stuff. We are continuing our match uh, between Paul Charles Morphy and Samuel Standage Bowden. Uh, and in the previous game, uh, Morphy uh, got a really bad position straight from the f straight from the opening. Uh, in this game, it's Bowden who gets a, a very bad position straight out of the opening, and then he's the one who has to suffer now. Uh, so it's a it's a very interesting game. I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. But before uh, we check that out, I would just like to congratulate the winners uh, of yesterday's uh, arenas. So here are the winners. The winners of the medal arena are Dev90, uh, Chess Hater, and uh, Sadat123. Uh, and the winners of the Agamator Friday arena are Michal2002, Scarlet Foster, and Nat Paul. And uh, we are going to read um, uh, everyone from the top 10. So uh, from the medal arena, uh, like I said, Dev90, Chess Hater, and Sadat123. Uh, Gar3, TTX1, uh, Luis Soletti, uh, Knights22, Surya HR. Uh, Agad Matter 2, uh, TMT and T200, and the Dime BT. So those are the top 10. And the top 10 from Agad Matter's Friday Arena are, like we said, Michal 2002, Scarlet Foster, Nat Paul, Bruno Pavcevic uh, came in 4th, uh, Varad 45, uh, Devan uh, 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 SH29, Travis Namata, Daniel C87, uh, Jukaric Analysis, and Ho House uh, in uh, number 10. So there you have it, and now let's check out the game. Uh, this time Morphe with the white pieces, and as you can see, I fixed uh, Morphe's middle name, uh, so it's no longer uh, mis uh, misspelled. Uh, opens with e4. Uh, Bowden goes for e5, as he usually does. We have knight f3, knight to c6, and here Morphe goes for the scotch with the d4. Uh, Bowden grabs the pawn, e captures on d4, and now bishop to c4, uh, the scotch gambit, uh, asking uh, black, do you want to maybe try and... Uh, uh, grab more material, keep the pawn, or do you want to go for development? And of course, the Bowden goes for development, bishop to c5, while defending the d4 pawn, and here Morphe just castles. Uh, Bowden goes for d6, he wants to develop his light square bishop as well, uh, and now c3 by Morphe. His idea is he wants to capture on d4 and create a very strong center, uh, and if black wants, black can grab another pawn, and Morphe will uh, develop the knight. So the best here is to capture the pawn with black. However, Bowden wants to uh, also finish development, so he goes knight to f6, and now c captures on d4. Uh, we have bishop back to b6, and here black has uh, decent development. However, white has a really massive center here, which of course uh, Morphe knows how to use. Uh, knight to c3, again, uh, just uh, continuing the development and Bowden castles. We have castles and now d5 asking Bowden what do you want to do here? Do you want to go knight to e5 where I can capture your knight? Maybe go king h1 next and then I will have uh, uh, the path open to go f4 with my pawn. Do you want to go knight to e7? Maybe shift the knight over to g6 or the move that Bowden played knight to a5 which is uh, which is the worst idea, and it's one of the reasons uh, he gets a terrible uh, position straight out of the opening. Morphe just moves the bishop, bishop d3, uh, and it is as of move 10 that this position has never been reached again. And the problem is the knight has no squares to retreat, and uh, b4 will uh, capture the knight. If Morphe gets b4 in, this knight is doomed. So, of course, Bowden has to prevent this. He, he goes for c5, but now, okay, you don't lose the knight, but the knight is still stranded there. The bishop on b6 prevents uh, the pawn from being pushed to b6, so you cannot uh, hide uh, hide your knight on b7. And you will you will be able to do it at some point. You have to go bishop c7, b6, maybe knight here, and then, well, the knight still can't go anywhere, but it, it's at least not very vulnerable. So Morphe continues development. We have bishop to g5, just normal rapid development, h6, and bishop to h4 now. And now Bowden also gets uh, uh, his developing move with the light square bishop. So bishop g4 pins the knight. Uh, h3, and now bishop to h5, but Morphe is not afraid to open up the position with the g4, so uh, he uh, messes up uh, the, the, the the king's defenses for a little bit, but with good cause. Uh, bishop to g6, and now queen to d2. He's saying, okay, my e4 pawn is nicely defended, I'm bringing this rook over to e1, and uh, with this knight stranded on a5, it's as if black is down a piece. So rook to e8, attacking the pawn three times, and now Morphe just defends it, rook a to e1. And now, finally, bishop to c7, grabbing more control of the e5 square, but also uh, maybe preparing a6, b5, that's not b5, uh, to maybe you can get the knight back into the game via the b7 square. However, Morphe gets a very, a very nice, a, a fine idea, if you will. Uh, knight to b5. He puts pressure uh, on the bishop here, and also there's a problem because because of the pin here uh, on, on the knight. So the queen might be uh, overloaded. Uh, and here you can play 
uh, a lot of things but probably bishop to b8 or bishop to b6 is the way to go uh, it's it's not a, an easy move to make but you don't want to have this uh, pr a constant pressure from the knight on the bishop. Uh, however, Bowden played king to h7 here, and we reach the position from the thumbnail. Now, this uh, move loses the game terribly. Uh, there are various ways you can you can proceed from here. Uh, however, there is one that completely just crushes black. So feel free to pause the video here and try to find this idea while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting, uh, well, pretty much everything. There's a lot to spot here. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, uh, it's e5. Uh, Morphe played bishop captures on f6. It's a different idea, but still a good one. Uh, there's also knight captures on c7 uh, and then going e5, but just e5 is, is definitely the way to go. Now, here you have a lot of problems. The knight is under attack. Of course, the knight cannot move as you lose the queen. If you go for the bishop first, then just captures, captures with check, and after the king moves or you play g6, then you just pick up the knight and you're up a piece. So, of course, completely winning. Uh, and another thing, uh, after you capture an e5, which is the only thing you can do if you don't want to uh, lose the game right away, then comes knight captures on c7, queen captures, and d6. This is the point. And now, of course, the queen cannot capture the pawn because bishop captures on g6 with check. And after pawn or king recaptures, you will just uh, grab the queen and white is up a queen. So uh, after this d6 move, you have to move the queen, but uh, the, the story doesn't uh, just uh, end here. After queen to d8, now you get knight captures on e5. And again, there's nothing to do uh, for black here. Uh, the, the queen still has to keep an eye on the knight here. Uh, there are, the, this knight still cannot move. This pawn is still not available, of course, due to bishop captures on g6. So pretty much whatever you play here, let's say bishop captures on d3. First, you get knight captures on f7. Attacks the queen, and after the queen moves, then finally queen captures on d3 with check g6, and now the crushing bishop captures on f6. Queen captures on f7, and now after this trade on e8, captures and captures, d7 uh, ends the game. Uh, so it's just, uh, it's a long variation, but everything is forced. Uh, so there's not much black can do about anything here. You either uh, allow the queening, and then you have to give up uh, a, a whole rook, or you capture the bishop, and then white just gets another queen, and of course completely winning. So uh, this was in the position, this e5 move. However, Morphy went for a different idea. He first played bishop captures on f6, uh, or not allowing queen captures because black loses the knight. So g captures on f6, Bowden has to recapture this way. Now knight captures on c7, queen captures, and queen to c3 now. Uh, queen to c3 with a deadly threat. This is what Morphy found. Uh, otherwise, he probably would have gone for the e5 idea if he had studied the position a little bit longer. Attacking f6, also putting pressure on the knight, but the real threat is just b4. Uh, uh, winning the knight because black will not be able to recapture since the queen is hanging. So Bowden has to go back. Queen to d8. And it's uh, pretty much as usual. Uh, if Morphy spent a little more time, he would have found e5 and he would probably end the game on the spot. Uh, but Morphy didn't think all that much of Bowden. I mean, he thought he was a decent player, but of course not uh, not on the same level as Morphy. And Morphy never wanted to take more than a few minutes on the move. Very rarely taking a few minutes on the move. Uh, pretty much al almost al always moving instantly. Uh, so, of course, sometimes you will miss uh, a stronger continuation. So here, knight to h4 uh, and uh, b6 now. Finally, uh, defending this knight, and now the knight can get back into the game. Even though, even from b7, you don't really have any squares. You have to move the queen. Like even if you, even if you get uh, the knight over here, you still have, you still don't have any squares because this pawn and uh, the pawn on f7 prevent the knight from entering the game. So this knight is doomed for the rest of the game. So uh, we have f4 by Morphy, now uh, putting a lot of pressure on, on black's king side. We have king to g7, getting out of this uh, diagonal, but just knight captures on g6, f captures, uh, and finally e5. And here uh, you have a problem. Of course, you don't want to open up the position as Morphy's rooks are fully operational here. For example, if you try something like captures, captures, and captures, you just get captures, and now all sorts of nasty discoveries are possible, so you might want to move the king, but now rook f6 is deadly. Uh, uh, really a, a fun move. Uh, point is, of course, uh, uh, you want to capture on g6, but if queen captures, then rook captures here with check, and if you don't want to lose the queen, uh, you don't have time to capture the rook, you have to defend the 
queen somehow uh, but then just captures captures and captures and you are up a whole rook so of course uh, completely unplayable so here Bowden went rook to c8 instead uh, at some point he might want to push c4 and he just has to wait and see what Morphe will do but now bishop to b1 of course Morphe now wants to grab hold of this diagonal put the queen in front of the bishop and go for checkmate so king f7 Bowden tries to hide uh, the king maybe run away over to the queen side but e6 check now and now it doesn't really matter what you do if king here then g5 will be very very strong so king back to g7 but now again queen d3 going for this g6 pawn and there is no move other than f5 you have to block this somehow so f5 g captures on f5 and now queen to f6 uh, but morphe says that's not really anything so just g uh, f captures on g6 uh, Bowden grabs the b2 pawn but now f5 and now if f6 comes is just game over so queen blocks f6 and this is just very sad when you have a queen uh blocking three connected pass pawns that's that's very sad uh but you know it is what it is uh, and now Morphe uh, does what he does best in situations like these. He finds uh, an instant win. He just pushes e7, uh, preparing rook to e6, followed by pushing the pawn to f6, and that's game over. And the problem is, of course, you cannot capture this, because after captures and captures, f6 wins the queen. There's no way, no way to do anything here. So Bowden tried c4. Uh, it attacks the queen, uh, and also it, this is now a pass pawn. So, of course, you want to push it, but queen to g3 by Morphe. Still, the idea is the same. Rook e6 followed by f6 so c3 there's no way to prevent this you still cannot capture on e7 and now of course rook to e6 kicking away the queen queen to d4 with check and now queen to f2 morphe offers a queen trade and of course if queen trade happens doesn't really change anything f6 is coming and it's game over uh, and also you guarded the c2 square so it's not a problem so after queen f2 queen captures on d5 was played uh, but now uh, it's actually mate in four so feel free to pause the video and try to calculate out the the mate in four idea while i give you a couple of seconds so uh for those of you who were able to do it congratulations on spotting the mate in four and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show it's of course you know you know what it is it's f6 with check so the bishop guards the g6 pawn there's nothing to, to be done here you have to go back doesn't matter king h8 or g8 king h8 uh is more resilient but now g7 check of course you cannot come to h6 uh h7 so king g8 f7 check and after king captures on g7 well you could play a lot of moves to win the game here we are of course looking for checkmate and that's queen to f6 and this is now of course checkmate so uh really wild game um uh, uh, Morphe retaliates in great style and uh, uh, Bowden was the one who was suffering for the entire game and as you can see uh, uh, this knight is not uh, played on a5 uh, for good reason and uh, that position has been, <laughs> has never been reached again for very good reasons as this knight even if you bring it back into the game uh, there's still no way for this knight to, to enter the game so a uh, terrible square for the knight don't ever do that in positions like this of course uh, so yeah, uh, once again, I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Richard Hennessy, uh, Yihu Nam, uh, Philip Chaikin, Luca Pete, and uh, JPTB for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, JPTB actually graduated uh, from MIT uh, la uh, this week, so congratulations on that, man. Uh, good job. Uh, and also, it was his birthday, so I uh, uh, wish you all the best uh, uh, as well. So, uh, once again, uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the Morphe Saga, we're going to check up on Pog Champs uh, Championship. We're going to check up on uh, Clutch Chess that, that's starting today. So, a lot of things happening, and we have our work cut out for us. And also, once again, congratulations to the winner of both arenas. Uh, thank you all. Uh, I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.